I'm CC Summers. I apologize for my voice. Um, the trees are jizzing this time of year and it is fucking me up. I just want to rip my sinuses out of my face. Anyways, let's get back into it. Okay, we just sacrificed poor fucking Eden, who did not deserve it, to the eldritch being in the alleyway and we're told that was not good enough, we need another person, which, which is what I said, because she's a fucking innocent person, and she's not the horrible garbage person that the being wants to be eating in the first place. There was literally no reason to bring her down there. And I am pressed. Ugh. Just to be clear, I'm doing this for you, Allegra, and because it's going to be a public service either way. I know that Cece is important to you, so if you ask for my help, I'll give it. Although her words are kind, she says my name with bitter derision. Thanks. <laughs> Lucian had it coming. I'm sure Sergio will be happy to see him dead, so it should take care of any lingering issues. Besides, Mateo always talks about people being garbage, and Lucian is the nastiest piece of trash I've ever met. Okay, I can get on board with sacrificing Lucian. Do you want to deliver the body, or shall I? No. You can do it, if you don't mind. Mm. It'll help you, so I don't. I'll drop by when everything is sorted. Ophelia finally turns to me. Yeah. I'm trusting you to take care of her, so don't screw it up. You'll have to deal with me. I blink a few times, surprised that she isn't calling me names or insulting me. I will. You can count on me. The day is slow, but I spend most of it worrying about what is going to happen to Allegra and I. I asked Allegra if Ophelia could be trusted, and she snapped at me again. Understandably, she's on edge. We both are. I tidy up the storefront and get ready for the end of the day. I hate that there isn't anything else I can do to put us at ease. I can't believe I helped Allegra kill someone. It was to save our lives, but... I can hardly stomach it. Allegra, I'm almost done for the day. Do you want me to stay here until we get word from Ophelia? No. You should go on home. I want to be here if something bad happens. You know, to support you. Something wrong? I'll be fine, CC. I'm not some child who needs to be coddled. Ophelia was worried about you, so I thought I would hang around. <sighs> go home. All right, okay. We're both on edge. That much is to be expected, but I still feel like a dog walking away from its master after a scolding. I suppose that her reaction might have been worse. She didn't lash out at me as badly as she could have. Was I being too clingy? I'm only worried about her just as she worried about me. I can't bring myself to sleep, not after all that we've done. The next day, I've done nothing to prepare for approaching Allegra. Was Mateo appeased? Should I ask outright what happened? Should I give her space and wait for her to bring it up? I try to steer clear of her, giving her plenty of space to finish her work and cool off. As usual, she was thrown herself into work. I don't see Ophelia's bag anywhere in the shop or back room, so I suppose that it's all finished and she's moved to a new project. Must be important for her to be so attentive. Then again, Allegra is meticulous with all of her work. I manage to muster a greeting to her as she offers a nod of the head. The remainder of the day continues without incident. I think Allegra's back to normal again, but I'm still afraid I'll make her angry. Hmm. Cece. What? Yes, Allegra? I flinch when she calls for me and nearly drop the clothes in my arms. After hours of silence, the sound of my own name is enough to make me jump. Yeah. We're done for the day. It's time to tidy everything, sweep up, and be sure everything's put away. Yes, Mom. Let's just do the clothes, I guess. Okay, I'll start out here and finish putting away these clothes. Come to the back for now. What is back there that I need to tidy? Oh, okay. For an idiotic moment, I wonder if I've made a mistake with my work. However, I soon revised that assumption. Hmm. 
Lock the door before you come back. I don't want anyone interrupting. Are you going to sacrifice me instead? I don't trust it. What did you want to talk about? Oy. You've been avoiding me. Well, no shit. You treat me like garbage. Why would I want to be around that? We've been avoiding each other. No. I didn't do it on purpose, if that's what you mean to imply. See, this, this is what I'm talking about. I know you didn't. When you're worried about something, you get engrossed in your work. I didn't want to be a bother. I... So that's it. I thought for a bit you were angry with me. For the life of me, I couldn't figure out why. Yeah, why on earth would I be angry with you? No reason at all. I lose my temper a lot and when I snapped at you yesterday, so I thought that might be it. It hurts when we don't talk. We're friends, right? I guess. We are, it's just... I really don't want to upset you because I think you're going to axe murder me. I don't want to upset you. I wanted to talk to you about Mateo, but I didn't want you to be upset when I brought it up. I don't want you to feel bad about what's happened. You've done all you can. I'm sorry. We've been through a lot these past few days. I know that it's been hard on you. You're afraid what'll happen if you're going to die. I wanted to help you through it, but it seemed like you wanted me to leave you alone. Yeah. Like when I snapped at you while constructing Ophelia's bag. Yeah, or when you snapped at me when I asked you if you're okay, when you snapped at me about what we're gonna do for the day, when you snapped at me because I breathed too loudly in your direction. Yes. She sighs. A hint of guilt flashes through her eyes. I'm sorry. I've said it a lot and I'm really sorry. Talking to you about what I've done makes me feel dirty. It's even worse now that you're involved. I never wanted to spread that to you or involve you in Mateo's schemes. My job, Mateo, and everything else, it's hard for me to handle it. You've been worried about me and I ignored you. Stress was no excuse. It's all my fault. I know I probably don't deserve your forgiveness, but I'm asking for it. I hope you can grant it to me, even though I've done so many disgusting things. Well, the more I forgive her, the less likely it is that she will sacrifice me to the thing in the alleyway. Yeah, it's fine, I guess. That's not true. You don't always yell at me. And you recognize that it's a bad thing. It doesn't stop her from doing it, though, which is the point. Besides, I can't imagine how you must feel or how you cope with what's going on. There's no one for you to talk to. Cece, I, I've always been alone, so it's hard for me to work with people. Since you've been here, I've changed a lot. I tried to be patient and calm myself. I'm sorry. I've made a lot of mistakes, and I'm sorry. It's all my fault. Why am I like this? I'm a horrible person. Okay, we've done this before. We've done this whole conversation before. Like, this is the cycle. You do something or say something super shitty to me and make me feel bad about myself, and then I come and tell you, hey, I don't really like that you did that, and you're like, oh my god, you're so right. I'm so sorry. I'm a horrible, terrible, no good person. I don't deserve anything ever. I should just go die in a ditch. And then now I'm sitting here trying to take care of you and telling you, no, it's okay, you're fine, everything's fine. Well, really, you should be telling that to me. The only reason I'm telling you that you're okay is because I don't want to be killed. That's all. <sighs> a monster, a freak, a useless shrimp. She buries her face in her hands. They were right about me. I'm... I... I don't deserve to live. What did I say? What did I say? I've heard this conversation before. I have the script. Got it memorized. That's not true. I push her arms back and hug her, wiping away the tears that gathered on her cheeks. 
Allegra, it's okay. You're shouldering something unimaginable, and you've done it for so long on your own. It's okay. I came in here because you were being a shitty-ass person to me, and now I'm going to comfort you. That's how that should work. You're amazing and beautiful and kind. Everything you've done has been with the intention to protect me. I... I'm not that great of a person. I know! <laughs> Don't be so hard on yourself. It makes me sad when you beat yourself up. I'm sorry. Let's get back to work. I'll finish up back here. You can go home if you want. Allegra's temper is scary, but for all the time she's yelled at me, I think she's only angry at herself. Not an excuse. She's protected me. And that's what matters most. I might not like it, but she's shielded my life. What if Mateo had pulled his machete on me? All I can do to move on is push all of these horrible events from my brain. Ignore them. Pretend nothing happened. We're safe now. Allegra is working on something again. She's being very secretive about it, as usual. I'm curious, but I don't want to disturb her. Nothing out of the ordinary there. I remember quite well what happened last time I interrupted her work. Something wrong? No, not really. My voice breaks as I struggle to maintain a calm facade. Hmm. Hey, I'm not angry at you. No. I've been working, but I'm not gonna snap at you, okay? Don't be annoyed that I'm feeling like I have to tiptoe around you because you're an asshole. And just so you know, I've been taking breaks, and I haven't been living totally on coffee. Good to see she's taking her health a little more seriously. I settle down once more, happy to see that she's taken my advice to heart. I'm glad. I try to peer over to her workspace. Allegra has been in the back for a while, so she must be working on something good. I didn't notice that I had been creeping up to her work table until she spoke up. <laughs> You're curious, huh? Well, it's done anyway. It was going to be a surprise, but I can show it to you now. Allegra pulls out a knit scarf. It's purple, and there's a pattern of scissors that matches the charms dangling from her hat. A scarf? Yes. I made it for you. I thought it might be nice if... I... If we matched. Since we work at the same store, it might be cute. Do you like it? It's okay. No, we're gonna be happy about it. <laughs> Yay! Scarf! I think it's wonderful. It's really pretty. I assume you knitted it yourself? <laughs> I'm glad you think so. I'm no good with words, as we know, so I wanted to make you a present. And now the love bombing. I'm so sorry, it's never gonna happen again. Oh my god. And then the next thing you know, she's yelling at me. Again. Thank you. I love it. Do you make gifts like this for all of your friends? Allegra stares at me for a moment before answering. No. I don't really have friends. I... Well, many friends. There's Ophelia, of course. She's my best friend, but that's it. Mateo doesn't count. I see. I thought maybe that you had known Mateo for a while since he calls you on the phone. Allegra stares at me as if she's unsure how to respond. What do you mean? If he has your number, that means you must know him somewhat well. Oy. It's for convenience's sake. If you haven't noticed, I'm rarely happy to talk with him. I noticed. I might like your number, though. They don't have my number yet? Like, I work for her. How does she not have my number yet? My phone number? I see you every day, what's the point? I don't know. Maybe we can hang out on a weekend outside of the shop. Unless you don't want to. You see me every day, so I would understand. I don't mind. I'll give it to you if you want it. Yes. We can go out sometime. 
Would you like that? Yes. Maybe. I'm not very good at clubs and places like that. No clubs, then. We'll go out to see a movie. <laughs> I like the sound of that. Your pick. Her responding smile and laugh is enough to put my heart at ease. I only have to keep moving forward with her. Soon, these past events won't bother me at all. How? You lured an innocent woman to a back alley, had her murdered and fed to a beast. I don't feel like that's something time will just, you know, make better. Like, well, it's fine. It's been like three weeks. Get over it. I've been working on something the last few days. It's a surprise for Allegra, a present as a symbol of our friendship. She means so much to me. It's only been a few months, but it feels like I've known her forever. And she saved me in my hour of need. She saved me every moment after that. The fear of her anger has diminished. I know she'd never hurt me. It feels silly to say that I once thought she would. Allegra. Something wrong? I fumble around my bag trying to retrieve the wrapped gift. I have something for you. I made it myself. I hope you like it. Allegra takes the gift and removes the wrapping paper. She bursts out laughing as she unfolds the scarf I've been working on. Why are you laughing at me? I didn't laugh at your stupid scarf that you practically made for yourself because it's purple and has scissors on it and that is not at all what I wear. Yeah, I probably went overboard, but I had so much yarn. It would have been a shame to waste it. <laughs> it's a bit long, don't you think? No, I don't think. And I mean, I don't think it's too long, not that I don't think. We all know I don't do that. I didn't know when to stop knitting. You made me a scarf as a symbol of our friendship and I wanted to make you one in return. You've given me a lot of things. Maybe not all intentionally. You've given me a friend. I'd literally be dead without you. You've helped me as much as I helped you. I can't take all the credit. Cece, I want you to always be in my life. <laughs> we'll take care of each other. She gives me a hug and it feels like a promise. She'll look out for me. She'll keep me safe and I will do the same. I really thought that we would get the super good ending. I thought I was being very nice and forgiving. I guess it wasn't enough. Well, you know what? All of that forgiving and trying really hard to keep her happy and all that stuff and still getting the middle path is really just like putting me in my demon era. I'm feeling a little feral. And I feel like I need to piss her the fuck off. Okay, so she hates it when we apologize, so. Sorry, again. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry about this. I think this is what we did last time, but she didn't like it. So I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna be like, ma'am, yes ma'am. I'm gonna make you seem really fucking old. <laughs> do you have any fucking idea what you're even doing? Are you trying at all? No, I'm not. I'm specifically here to piss you the fuck off. Clearly, I'm doing all this shit on purpose. I say as if I'm being sarcastic, but I'm really not. <laughs> what? What? Don't give me lip, you fucking disgrace. How dare you? You can't even fucking organize the racks properly. I took a chance on you, and this is how you talk to me? <gasps> the fuck is wrong with you? It isn't rocket science, shit for brains. Ugh. Ugh, you're so making me regret all of my choices. Is something wrong? No, because if I tell you something, then you're gonna be a little bitch about it. Nothing, it's fine. No. It's not nothing. Obviously, it's bothering you enough to affect your work. Tell me what it is. 
It's none of your fucking business. If I say it's not your business, then it's not your goddamn business. Do you have any interest in fashion and sewing? No. Fashion and sewing is stupid. And only stupid people like fashion and sewing. It's okay. I don't really care. I don't think I'd be good at it. Yeah. Then why did you take this job? Because I need money. And you offered me money. It's typically how jobs work. I needed work. You didn't say I'd have to do any designing. I'm sorry. Hmm. Maybe working here will give you some appreciation for this kind of thing. <laughs> if you keep up the good work, I can teach you how to design and sew. That's not a reward for me because I don't care about sewing. Hmm, what are we going to do with this surplus of fabric that was sent to us? I think last time we kept it. We told her, well, I mean, they fucked up. You should just keep it. So send it back this time. Be, it, be honest. Be a good citizen. Earn back some of those karma points for murdering a man and chopping his body up. <laughs> Since you're so caught up about my stealing, maybe we should send the fabric back. If you don't need all of it, it seems a bit dishonest. Isn't it kind of like stealing? No. I'm going to keep it. It's their mistake anyway. Come on, we still have to open shop. What about the mess back there? Can you still work? Oy. If the company starts asking, I'll send some back, okay? No harm done. For now, I'll hold on to it. So stealing's okay when you do it. Do you remember what I asked a while back? You had a surprise for me. Because I don't give a shit about designing and sewing. You said you had a surprise for me. I guess I did say something about that, but that's not what we're doing today. <sighs> I told you that if you keep up the good work, I'll teach you about designing and making clothing. You really can't remember that? Okay, you just said, do you remember what I said to you? I did remember what you said to me. You didn't say anything specifically, just what you said to me. God! Hmm. Just forget it. I thought it would be good for business if we worked on that. And it might help you look like your clothes weren't picked out by clowns. Go fuck yourself. You wear the same fucking outfit every goddamn day. Don't talk to me about my clothes. Are you afraid of me? No, I mean, I just watched you stab a man to death and chop him into little pieces and then say, I know a guy, I'll get this taken care of. What's there to be scared of? A lot. There's a lot to be, to be scared of. Look, we're friends, we're friends. Okay, we're friends. You're just a little bit scary. Just tiniest little bit. Well, you're a little scary when you're angry. And you have plenty of reason to be angry. I thought it would be best if you worked it out and then we talked. Yeah. So you're scared of me? Yes. I don't think it's unreasonable to hold off on talking to somebody until they've worked through their own anger so that they don't take it out on us. I don't know why that's a bad thing. That's not what I meant. You're twisting my words. I'm sorry. We've been through a lot these past few days. I know it's been hard on you. You're afraid what'll happen if you're going to die. I wanted to help you through it, but it seemed like you wanted me to leave you alone. <sighs> yes, like when you snapped at me every fucking day. <laughs> Um, I don't forgive you. <laughs> Maybe you are. I can't speak about everything you've done because you won't tell me. Is it really that bad? Have you killed a lot of people, Allegra? More than those two? It's all my fault. You're right. I take things out on innocent people. I've hurt people and given them over to Mateo. I use them to save my own sorry ass. <sighs> For what? I should have given him my life a long time ago. I'm the worst. Kay. I'm sorry. You're my friend, and all I end up doing is scaring you and hurting you. That's not? Yeah. I always end up like this. It always ends with me yelling. Allegra raises her hand and I flinch. Her expression falls and she lowers her hand once more. Were you about to slap me in the face because you yell? What? Oh, 
wasn't going to hit you or anything. Then what's the point? Why would you bring your hand up? I'm sorry. I should... Never mind. Let's just clean up. Okay. I don't have any reassuring words for this tantrum. I don't know exactly what Allegra has done, so how can I forgive her for it all? Do I like the scarf that you practically made for yourself? Something wrong? Well, what do you think? It's a little long, isn't it? It's, uh... You don't like it. I spent days making that, you know. I thought I'd do something nice for you for once. You do plenty of nice things. I just don't wear scarves. Sorry. You spent days making a scarf for your fucking self. I don't... <laughs> Never mind. If you don't like it, maybe I can use it for something else. Even if it isn't written on her face, the pain of my rejection is in her voice. I didn't mean to hurt her. Watching her crestfallen expression is enough to make me feel like the lowest person. I was called to the shop on our day off. Is Allegra going to give me some more sewing lessons? Allegra, are you there? She's sitting at her work table with two cups of coffee placed before her. She looks rather serious. Yes. Thanks for coming, Cece. I am not about to be fucking sacrificed. I swear to God, I will kick you in the throat. <laughs> Are you going to give me more lessons? Allegra laughs and shakes her head. <laughs> no lesson today. I wanted to talk to you about something. I... It's very important. Allegra looks nervous. The expression doesn't really set me at ease, accompanied with the coffee and solemn atmosphere. Please have a seat. Okay... I sit down on the chair next to hers. Her hands are fiddling with her coffee cup. Allegra, are you all right? Yes. Yeah. I don't know where to start. Just throw the news at me. I'm ready to hear it. Okay. She looks straight at me. I love you. Why? <laughs> You didn't love me in the nice ending. Wait, what? What? Hmm. I said I love you. Allegra. I didn't say anything in return, and that is answer enough. Allegra looks like she's about to cry. I... You don't feel the same. I feel like that much has been obvious in the way that I've been reacting to your general presence. <laughs> I'm sorry. I tried to change myself so I wouldn't scare you away, but it looks like I failed. Oy. I just wanted you to love me, no matter what I do. Uh. I'm total shit, right? Yep. What? That's not true at all. You're wonderful. You deserve love and happiness. I hope you'll find someone who returns your feelings, but it's not me. I'm sorry. The sadness on her face turns into a look of sheer rage. Yeah. Really? If you think I deserve all of that, then why are you so afraid of me? Oh, I don't know. Nothing to do with the fact that I'm not allowed to even say I'm not in love with you without you freaking the fuck out. I back away from the table, but she follows. There's a wad of thick ribbon in her hand. You were planning this. She was going to tell me that she was in love with me, and if I turned her down, she was going to fucking attack me. But no, there's no reason for me to be scared of you. <laughs> <gasps> See? You're trying to run from me. You hate me. Allegra. Allegra, please calm down for a second. <gasps> no. I break for the door, but her small frame rams into me from behind. We fall to the ground. I struggle, but Allegra is stronger than she looks. It's no use. She forces me down. Her eyes look so cold. My head slams into the floor, either from the fall or Allegra grabbed hold of my head. Everything goes black. When I wake, I'm on my back, looking up at the ceiling. I try to stand, but I can't. Something is restricting my limbs. No reason to be afraid of you. Allegra comes into view. I try to speak, but it comes out muffled through the gag in my mouth. I should have thrown you out. I should have called the police. But you fed me that sob story, and I felt bad for you. I let you stay. And
And now, since then, all you've ever done is try to get away from me. You hate me. Why did you take the job? I guess you were just after money. Yes, it's a job. It's not like I walked into your shop because I was secretly in love with you. I didn't even know who you were. Ugh! It's all you cared about from the beginning, you piece of shit. But I will never let you get away again. A shiver goes down my spine. Never let me get away again? She grabs something from her left. I can't see it very well. Whatever she grabbed glints in the light. A blade. My blood runs cold. It's the rotary cutter. Hmm. Stay still, unless you want to feel even more pain. Is she about to take my goddamn legs? What is it with these people and taking my fucking legs? She pauses, staring down at me. I was right. Sewing is a useful skill. Leave my fucking legs alone. My protests fall on deaf ears as Allegra slides the cutter over my thigh. All I can feel is searing pain as she begins sawing at my arms and legs. Arms, too! She's taking my arms, too! Cool! Love that. Am I going to die? Is this the end? She'll give me to Mateo just like she wanted from the beginning. Where did I go wrong? How dare I call her out on being an asshole sometimes? <laughs> Don't worry. I'll patch you up and make sure you aren't a mess. I'll take care of you. You'll never be afraid of me again. Never. You need me now. You're mine. Uh. Oh no, sweetie. That's not love at all, is it? That's not what you were hoping for. Or maybe you hope for it after all. Were you curious how Allegro would feel if she were hated? <laughs> You're crueler than I thought. Get wrecked. She's an asshole. <laughs> no standing on your own. <laughs> okay, I guess we'll be fucking ultra nice to her so she won't cut off our goddamn arms and legs. <sighs> do I have any interest in fashion and sewing? Boy, howdy do I. Love fashion and sewing. It's, it's so cool. I think it's interesting. I don't know much about it, but it seems so fun. So fun. And guess what I need to sew? My arms. I was hoping you'd be interested. I'm glad I was right about that. So right. So right. I love having my hands. I, I mean sewing. <laughs> Who taught you to design? If you adopted their style, I'm sure you would be a great teacher. The unspoken thought here is that Allegra runs the shop well, so... Surely her teacher must have been effective. I... Mama taught me. I don't think her style would be suitable. She yelled at me a lot. Everything I made was shit. I mean, that's... the way that you teach anyways. I'm okay. If I can help it, I don't want to do that to you. A little too late. I didn't know this was the relationship Allegra had with her mother. It makes sense why she has problems working with people. What about your father? He was in charge of finances, investments, and orders. Things like that. Mama made... Mama and I made the clothes and designs. She wasn't really happy with my work. And now I'm running the shop. Give the lesson some thought. Maybe you'll come up with a good idea. Are you afraid of me? No. No, you are so sweet. So sweet. Sweet enough to let me keep my arms and legs. I'm not afraid of you. Hmm. You're lying. I'm serious. Maybe it's not entirely the truth, but I think deep down, she's not a bad person. I don't want to hurt her feelings. Not a bad person at all. Nope. Nope. You may be a bit intimidating when you're angry, but I'm not afraid of you. <laughs> I'm glad. I don't know what I'd do if you hated me. Take my arms and legs. Being afraid of someone and hating them aren't the same thing, but this isn't the time to point that out. I'll get you a fresh cup of coffee. She stands up and exits the room, leaving me to heavy silence and nothing but my thoughts for comfort. 
Am I afraid of her? Do I want to get away? Yes. I mean, no. No, I don't want to get away. No. Mm, no. It's after closing time, and Allegra and I are having coffee in the back room. She looks nervous for some reason. Is it another difficult client? About a week ago, we had another order about the same bag that Allegra designed for Ophelia. Evidently, they liked it so much they wanted one of their own. I'll have to make sure that Allegra takes care of herself this time. Allegra, is something up? Something wrong? Mm. I'm fine. Although she says this, she's picking at the hem of her sleeve and tapping her foot with impatience. Is there anything I can help you with? No. It's not what I called you here for. <sighs> Cece, I wanted to tell you something. Sure, go ahead. We're friends, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think we are, don't you? Yes. I just wanted to be sure. See, there's something I want to say to you that might complicate things. Mm -hmm. She gets up from the table and turns around. I'm unsure of what she means to do until she walks over to our coffee machine. Wait there. Okay. I can't see what she's doing, but she presses several buttons on the machine and moves a cup underneath. Finally, she turns around, holding a steaming mug. She places it on the table and pushes it towards me. The foam is in the shape of a heart. Aww. I just wanted to say, you're not just my friend. I feel more for you than that. I, I like you. Like, I like, like you. Aww. I, I know what you mean. Actually, I thought we had already said this. I felt my face heat up. Allegra, I... Uh, please, let me finish. I wanted to say some other things. I thought a lot about how I would say it, so listen carefully. You're kind and keep a calm head. You're not afraid of me. I... You're beautiful. I care a lot about you. You have so much patience with me, and maybe I don't deserve it, but I still want you here. It takes me a moment to respond. It's not that I'm afraid of her, but that I can barely believe what she's saying. It's more than I could have ever hoped for. I feel the same way. So please let me keep my arms and legs. <laughs> Allegra's face lights up with her smile. I realize that this is the expression I want her to wear always. You have passion for what you do, and you've been incredibly kind to me. You've protected me since we first met. I want you to always be happy. <laughs> I've been thinking. It had to be fate that brought us together. It was meant to be and all of that? I laugh, and she returns my cheerful expression. <laughs> exactly. She wraps her arms around me in a hug. I return the gesture, curling against her. Her hold tightens, but it isn't crushing. We're wrapped up in the warmth of one another. I lean down and press my lips to her mouth in a soft kiss. Allegra bends toward me in pleasure. Um, please don't. Don't ever leave me. A world without you has no meaning. Wouldn't dream of it. Because I like my legs. Of course. I won't ever hurt you. From now on, nothing can separate us. Other than a rotary cutter. If it was fate that brought us together, I know from this point our lives will become even more intertwined. It's a comforting feeling. Love. Two best friends. Five feet apart because they're not gay. The shop is quiet each afternoon, and by the time the sun starts to go down, both Cece and I are busy cleaning the shop. It's a nice routine. They sweep up and close the blinds while I tidy the checkout counter and lock the back room. Thanks. Ophelia wants to meet us for coffee this afternoon, so let's be quick about cleaning up today. She doesn't mind that I'll be coming? She invited both of us. Is there a problem? No, not at all. They smile, but I don't miss the little shift in their eye. They're apprehensive. I get it. It's not that I didn't know how Cece felt about Ophelia, or that I didn't know how Ophelia felt about Cece, but I wanted the two most important people in my life to get along. Of course, Ophelia can be difficult to like when she wants to be a pain. 
Cece is patient, and I can only hope that persistence will bring the both of them together. There's still the possibility that Cece will change their mind and start to hate me, either because of Ophelia or because of my temper. But maybe it won't come to that. Nope, sure won't. We walk to my favorite cafe for cappuccinos. Cece has taken to ordering the same thing as me. I like walking with Cece. They aren't too chatty, and they know when it's best to leave me be. It's nice to have someone who cares that much about me, someone who pays attention to what makes me happy. Despite that happiness, sometimes I feel the apology sitting on the edge of my lips. I'm sorry for being a nuisance. I'm sorry for being useless. I'm sorry for being an angry little shrimp. What is with the shrimp? <laughs> I'm sorry for yelling. But then I hear their little laugh and reply. Don't worry about it. I know you didn't mean it. You're just tired. Even if you get angry, I won't run away. How did I come to deserve a person like this? We place our orders and turn to take a seat at one of the tables. Before we can sit down, however, the cashier clears her throat. Thanks for stopping by again. Yes. Sure. Your friend isn't here with you today. She hasn't been back in a while. Ophelia. She'll be coming later. No, no, that other woman that was with the two of you a few weeks back. Oh. That Eden person. I feel my heart stop, but an excuse slips out of my mouth before I have to worry. No. She's not our friend. She stopped by in our shop to buy a gift for someone. She's just one of my customers. What a weird thing to say. I would have been like, oh no. I didn't know her all that well, but I'm... That sucks. <laughs> like, don't... You sound so angry. Oh, I see. Luckily, she doesn't ask any more questions and brings our orders to the table after a few minutes. Cece and I sip our drinks in silence. It's nice. Comfortable. I feel peaceful with them, no matter what we're doing. Allegra, where's Ophelia? She isn't usually late, is she? Hmm. She said that she has to run an errand first. It'll be just us for a bit. Is that okay? Of course, I like going on dates with you. Even though the two of us have been a couple for several weeks, I'm still not used to that word. Or when Cece calls me their girlfriend. I... Okay. Cute blush. I don't... Are you going to do that every time I say something related to our relationship? It's cool if you do, but I'd like to plan for it. Plan for what? Maybe get my phone ready so I can take a picture when you start to get nervous. Don't... Uh, don't tease me like that. But it's fun. Fun for you. I stare down at my drink, searching for a way to change the conversation topic. I don't hate it, this kind of teasing, but I never really know what to say, and I think Cece has too much fun picking on me. Oh, You don't like... A little bit of light teasing. Guess I should just start screaming at you all the time. Thankfully, however, Ophelia enters the cafe only a moment later, and I don't have to keep mumbling in embarrassment. Allegra. She pauses for a moment, looking between me and Cece. <laughs> Hi, Cece. Keeping well? I'm doing all right. They smile to one another, and I let out a shaky breath. Good. I want them to be friends. And even more than that, I want Ophelia to approve of us. She's my best friend, after all. Ophelia bounces up to the counter and orders before taking a seat with us at the table. I'm surprised to find that, instead of sitting next to me, she settles next to Cece across the table. Something wrong? Where have you been? I haven't heard from you in a while. Yeah. Mateo had me do some jobs for him. Since Lucian isn't around to take care of the escort business, I've had my plate full. I never liked Mateo. Never trusted him. I know that Ophelia can handle herself, but I worry. Sometimes, she's just a bit too carefree. I wonder if she believes she's invincible. Ophelia. What? Cece is on the same page as me, and I can say exactly what I want to tell Ophelia. That guy really isn't... Dummy. Oh, what do you know? I clear my throat. I love Ophelia, but she can't be disrespectful to Cece. Hmm... They know enough to warn you against spending time with Mateo. It was a bad idea, Ophelia. We just want you to be safe. I can handle myself, Allegra. Don't worry. If he does something gross, I'll beat him up. No, you won't. 
I don't doubt that she's strong, but Mateo is a terrifying person. I have no idea what he's capable of. <laughs> don't worry about me, okay? But I would worry anyway. That guy was bad news, blackmailing us into doing the most horrible things. Would he eventually come after Cece and make them do the things Ophelia and I had to do? I can't stop thinking about it, even long after our coffee meetup is over. On the way back to the apartment, I worry with my lip. Cece notices my quiet. Are you okay? I... I'm worried about her. You can't make her choices. It's hard, but if she's going to put herself in danger... I know. I knew that I couldn't protect her forever. I love Ophelia, but I wanted to protect myself and Cece. Still, Ophelia was my best friend, and Mateo didn't care about anyone. He'd do anything to get what he wanted. I couldn't help but think of all of this as my fault. Because I had spent time with Cece, I didn't spend as much time with Ophelia. Perhaps if I had devoted more time with her, she wouldn't have made this decision. And now, she turned to Mateo. It was my fault after all, huh? I just can't win. Whatever, Allegra. <laughs> you cut my damn legs and arms off. I have no sympathy for you. <laughs> God, we still have so many people to get through. And somehow, I managed to get the two worst people in the game first. <laughs> What can I say? I know how to pick them. <laughs> Just for your safety, it's probably best to not leave a rotary cutter laying around anywhere. And I'll see you later. Bye.